What's up, Cool Nation? That's me. Coolness17. The coolest of the cool. That's me. So today we're going to do something a little different than usual. Nope, no paying view or let's play or adventure the toys today. Sorry, fellas. But rather, today we're going to be looking at Lost Media. Yep, Lost Media. Yep, Media. Whether it be a movie, a TV show, a video game, we we get media to get entertained. But uh, usually, there's some media which ends up getting poor docu documentation. So as a result, it becomes lost, which means there's no remains of it, like completely gone. And the entire thing isn't out there to enjoy. Yeah, this is a very unfortunate thing with media, actually. A lot of things just can just sometimes get lost. Sometimes they can get lost forever. But other times, they can end up being found. Which means we actually finally get the full version. And we're going to be looking at that today. This is a look at lost media. So let's begin. Okay, so of course you have to start from the Rhapsody Street Kids. Now, I've already made a review of this film, so I expect this to be a bit more brief. I'm just going to go over some points that I didn't go over in that video. So, first of all, I learned that Wolf Church Studios was actually established in 1997 and then went defunct in 2004. So yeah, and also when this film became lost, I'm gonna go over the meat, the the thing that exists did it when like was lost, like the actual film. So there was promotional material, IMDb cast list, but the most thorough thing is this demo reel that was found in 2008. So this demo reel had an animation test for App City. And stuff. It's all pixelated, but it, for some reason, it actually looks better than the final product. Yeah. Though when I commented uh, on this video, someone replied by saying this is because it's a demo reel. Okay. So the the music also has music. There's also music from the film itself. No, there, there are renditions which are actually really creepy. They sound... Th these renditions sound like something out of my nightmares or something. Like, look at me. It's it's in the demo reel too. And it starts off with what seems like men groaning. I'm gonna spare you and not, not actually show you it. But if you want to find it yourself, it's on YouTube. So yeah. So I have a bit of information that I just showed you. Like I said, it wouldn't be a long segment. I already made a video. So if you want to learn more about Rhapsody Street Kids, go watch my review about it. I need the views. Oh, and by the way, not many people are subscribed to my channel. So um, if you can, then um, please subscribe. Please. <laughs> Please, I only have 11 subscribers, okay? Here's another short segment that has some Wolf Tracer Studios crap. Wolf Tracer Dinosaur Island. So, it was another film made by Wolf Tracer Studios. But J-Rose Productions, uh, like, they weren't there. To help. With this film production. Well, really, not much is actually known about this film production compared to Rhapsody. <laughs> There's barely anything. All we know is that it was created either in 2003 or 2004. And some sources actually say it's a, it's a direct-to-video film. But, like, I have no, no, I have nothing that backs that. Not a single copy of it has surfaced on home media. It was also animated with 3D choreographers, so, um, yeah. This was also lost, it was in the demo reel, but then it was found. And this time Colin Slater actually unearthed it himself. Yeah, Colin Slater actually uploaded it to his own channel. 
So I might do a review of Wolf Tracer Dinosaur Island in the future, but the story is very complicated and too much to take in, so it, it might happen, it might not. I don't know, we'll see in the near future. So yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about Spongebob Rehydrated. And in case you don't know, I'm using footage from Valesky Bomb 94's video because... Because the the actual short itself is only thirty seconds long, so I would have to keep on rewinding it over and over again. So for convenience, I'm just using clips from this review. So what uh, I'm well, SpongeBob rehydrate, Sponge SpongeBob rehydrated. Like it's it's not SpongeBob but Battle for Bikini Bomb rehydrated. No, it's an episode of SpongeBob rehydrated. So one day, someone found this Nickelodeon promo, which contained footage from a CGI Sponge SpongeBob episode. Here, let me show you the the promo. Okay, so let me just show you. So a clip of Spongebob Rehydrated was actually in this commercial. Like, let me show you. So for a brief second, you can actually see a footage from the Spongebob Rehydrated. Look, there it is. The footage from the Spongebob Rehydrated short. So it's there. So after that, what followed is like a, uh, some people trying to find this. People were theorizing that it was actually a 10 minute short, but only the only thing they could really find was some a clip that was actually 30 seconds long. So what you just saw was a, was a Spongebob Rehydrated, and so the search continued on for a few months. But then, an animator from Nickelodeon revealed the truth. So it, it wasn't actually 10 minutes long, and that 30 seconds short was actually the entire thing. But it was without the original audio. So, but this is where crap gets interesting, because... Online, while doing research on this short, I actually found a clip with voice o with voiceovers and like stuff from the show, like they're actually speaking. So well, as you saw, they actually had voiceovers, but that, my theory is that this is just fan stuff and wasn't the actual thing. After all, an animator has said that the actual audio didn't exist, so it should be legit, and this is just probably a fan thing. I think it, he just, like, made this for fun. It, this isn't the real thing, probably. I don't think so. Next, let's talk about... A sequel to Super Mario World that was actually scrapped. So, of course, this is called Super Mario's Wacky World. Super Mario's Wacky World was intended to be be the sequel to Super Mario World, like I said. So, it was being developed by Nintendo for the SNES CD, which was like, you know, a collaboration between Nintendo and Sony. However... Remember, Sony backed out of the deal. Why? Well, Nintendo didn't want to use discs. They wanted to use cartridges. But then Sony wanted to use discs. Uh, so, for that, they left. They stopped working. So, 
Nintendo tried to partner with Philips then, but uh, their 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 plan went through, didn't go through. So as a result, the SNES CD is itself what wants me to. Well, not really. Real, not really though. But the SNES CD never never did officially come out. Um, come out. The Phil technically it did the Philips CDI. It did come out. It, it was after the SNES CD was scrapped. Philips went on to do the Philips CDI, and this, only enough some Mario and Zelda games did appear there. Hotel Ma the critically panned Hotel Mario and Zelda's Adventure came out on the CDI. But Super Mario Wacky World did not, probably because of the hardware limitations of the Philips CDI and the fact that it just wasn't a Nintendo console, so they just decided, no, not really. I don't think this is a good idea, because then it would not boost sales. So Super Mario's Wacky World never came to be on the, NE on the SNES, or the SNES CD, or the Philips CDI. But... We did technically end up getting a sequel to Super Super Mario World, which was Yoshi's Island. So that did come out. So at least there was a sequel. And if you don't count count that, Super Mario 64 is still technically a sequel. So yeah, we did get much superior sequels. In terms of Wacky Worlds, it 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 does not really look that good. I I don't really want to go into it. So this is basically a prototype that was lost, but then found. That's why it's in the lost media thing. Though, I, though this is the only prototype thing I'll mention. Mention. I know that I showed a clip from the Sonic the Hedgehog prototype, but it really. All right, I'll mention a few more prototypes, like one more prototype, and then that's it. Okay, and then the video will end. By the way. Even though we saw that Sonic the Hedgehog prototype, it's not going to be featured in this video, so... I, I'm going to make a video about the Sonic the Hedgehog prototype in the future. Okay, so the next one is going to be Star Fox 2. A game that was fully developed, but then cancelled, but then actually officially released. Star Fox 2 was originally intended to be the sequel to the original Star Fox, and it was supposed to come out on the SNES, in, according to this, in 1996. Really, it looks similar to the original Star Fox, but it was actually cancelled. Well, why, you might ask? Well, because the Nintendo 64 was already coming out, so as a result, this was really unnecessary. Like, the, it probably would have sold the poorly. Though they could have released this on the N64. Sure, it might have been a bit of a technical disappointment, but they could have done that. But, it doesn't matter. So, a few prototypes have surfa had surfaced, but the entire thing that was completed, it was lost. But eventually, Nintendo did release it. The SNES Classic came out, and it included Star Fox 2. It also came out on the Nintendo Switch under the SNES Online service. So yeah, Nintendo themselves have re-released Star Fox 2, which is honestly pretty amazing. So yeah, it does now exist. But let's go on to the final thing. Alright, so we're kinda going back to the realm of Rhapsody Street Kids. Presenting to you 3D Choreographer. Yup. Okay, so 3D Choreographer. I already kind of went over it, but here's a more thorough thing. So, like I said in the Rhapsody review, it was meant to be a program designed for non-artists. I mean, people weren't experienced with animation, it was for them. It was launched in between 1992 to 1994. Like, some sources say 1992, and some say 1994. So, it, you can choose from a few actors and stuff, 
And it was very easy to get them to do actions and stuff. Multiple versions existed and stuff. But in 2006, after, t mind you, 10 years of, of being available, yeah, over 10 years of being available, it finally died. Good riddance. In terms of the animation, it looked a lot, it looks a lot like Rhapsody, which makes sense, but it looks worse now. Everything looks more pixely, and everything is laggy, and the textures are worse. This is worse. This is all worse than Rhapsody. They, they stoop so low. So, it, it ended up becoming lost in 2006 when the, it folded. But, uh, there, and uh, I don't think it'll ever be found, but uh, there is some potential for it to be found. So, as you can see, someone actually created, uh, someone actually found a demo of it. The, the guy who made the demo is called Frix's Media Archive. And this is what he said. It's a pretty thorough read. So, it's a sampler for 3D choreographer. This software... Oh, Alright, we got... We got to go. go. Yeah. This software is considered lost media at this point. As all I could find it was this demo and part of its installer from a Razer 19, 1911 Whereas CD. If these... Oh, yeah, we already know. I could not find the cop copy of a program ever since I found out about the program. I found an ISO dump of a Razer 1911 demo disc in the Internet Archive with this in contained in it, along with an installer of sorts, though unusable. A friend of mine was able to extract what seemed to be nine zip files from the disc labeled 3D Core Zip 1 to 9, and I was able and uh, and combine them into one specific file. From there, I was able to properly run the demo on a Windows 95 virtual machine. There's a file with a bit of mystery, nst.exe, which seems to be an installer for it after looking through a hex editor. Unfortunately, after messing around with it in a hex editor and using the com combined version, I was unable to install it, and this stage probably never will. Anytime this application is launched, the error, the message error opening file pop, pops up and halts setup. If I have to take an educated guess, the compressed and salt files are missing. If not, then all the installer does is just install the demo. With all that said, I'm still currently on the hunt for this program. Let me know if you find it by any chance or you get the provided installed function somehow. So yeah, we do have a demo, but it is, a comp but it is still lost at this point. The entire program is lost. So yeah. Okay, here's one that is also still lost. And here's one that will probably never be found. This is a Sonic 1 prototype. Though not the one I showed you. Not the one that was found, no. This, my friend, is a demo that was shown at Tokyo Toy Show 1990. So, it actually had parallax scrolling. It was pretty impressive for the time. Like... It was actually, it actually had green hill, and it looks very different. It looks nothing like the final, really. really. But uh, it, this ended up becoming lost. This was the first time anyone found out about Sonic. So, yeah, it becoming lost is a huge epic fail. Originally, Yuji Naka, who was involved at Sega at, at these points, he actually actually wanted to include in Sonic Mega Collection, but it, they weren't able to find the ROM. 
So yeah, we don't have it. Like seriously, there was there was barely anything about it. It's completely lost, and for the longest time, that's all that's ever been of it. So yeah, it's lost, and it's very unfortunate that it is. These, these, the footage that I'm actually using is not from the actual, actual demo, but it's instead made by fans to replicate it to, and stuff. But the entire thing, the thing that actually introduced Sonic, it's not, it's gone. And I'm pretty sure we will never ever find it. It is, it is, it's... Like, no, it's never gonna happen. We're never gonna get the demo. There are other prototype builds of Sonic 1 that could be be coming. Maybe other prototype builds would be coming out it, since one already came out. But this one, no. And that wraps up my video on Lost Media. I'm pretty sure you were fascinated by a lot from this video. If you were, then... I hope you were. So, bye guys. And even if a 3D choreographer or the Sonic 1 Tokyo Toy Show demo never do surface, it could happen. Just remember to keep on hoping. And remember to actually try and find it yourself. Do whatever you can to find these. Oh my god. Make sure you can do whatever you can to finally find these. So, bye guys. I already said that.